Yeah. My passion and my ask over the last two or three years has been related to increased teacher leadership. Uh, I would imagine that every single one of us that, that have taught in public schools have sat around a table like this with your fellow teachers at lunchtime and described quite a few problems going on in your school, plus the solutions. And then we got up and went back to teaching. And none of those were really ever pursued. It was the principal's issue. But we also know administrators aren't super people. So what if all of us, right, were involved in this problem solving and, and move forward? Uh, that, uh, well, next is kind of my story of, of uh, teacher leadership. Um, no, we'll go back. Um, so <clears throat> about, well, a few years ago, I moved back home, uh, Eastern Kentucky, and to a school that we'll, we'll just say didn't have many resources. And so there were plenty of problems to be solved. One of the first hits that we got, because it turned out that I wasn't the only one that was ready for this teacher leadership. There were other science teachers. So we grouped together and, and it turns out that there was a mining company in our county, uh, a lime company, that uh, the granddaughter of the CEO was in sixth grade. And uh, long story short, he was willing to support us as we created a nature trail. So we were super excited about this. We all got together and we started to talk. Some of the teachers wanted to create a trail and make it more like a museum kind of experience. Like I'll name this, and we'll name this, and we'll name this, and we'll name that. I had a completely different idea. I wanted to create experiences that were, were much more interactive. Uh, and I'll just stop at that for right now. It turns out uh, that the amount of money they gave us uh, that debate back and forth wasn't necessary. They gave us enough money to make a trail and make kind of an outdoor classroom, you know, with a roof. That to me didn't feel like an end. That felt like a beginning. And so I had to figure out what was next. Uh, I decided to, to uh, do a Toyota Tapestry Grant. And now we need this. I bet most of you have done an activity like this before, right? The birds are all around. You have your kids ask questions, gather data, make inferences. It's awesome, right? And I, oops. I have, so it evolved into, in order to make it more authentic, I would take all these tables and move them out of the way. And instead of birds, I went to dinosaurs because dinosaurs are just way cooler and I made them life-size right so a piece of paper uh, would be one footprint and I would make basically this scene in all directions and the kids would get out their meter sticks we'd gather data we'd reason and and then make explanations and get into some really great arguments um, People look at this, some students look at this, most students look at this and go, well, it was two dinosaurs and there was a fight and one won. Some students would go, no, they weren't even, they're not even the same day. There was a stream up top, they came up, they got a drink, they walked away, they never even saw each other. Some of my younger students, because I do this in summer camps too, and I'll never forget this, a little second grader, she looked at it, so there was a date. Two dinosaurs walked up and they danced and the one got tired. So it jumped on the other's back and they walked off together. That's brilliant, right? So <clears throat> also in, in this whole um, experience, in the back of my head, I thought it could be even greater, even more authentic if, if we could make it three dimensional. What if those footprints, as it went from one side to the other, what if they got deeper and deeper? And so by the time that it was over here and just a singular one, well, we had evidence to support that one jumped on the other back or one ate the other so it's heavier or, you know, whatever the kids can think of. Uh, so we uh, started putting together the Toyota Tapestry Grant. And by the way, this is the first time I had ever written a grant in my life. 
Um, I've learned an incredible amount. Um, my first draft was about what this dinosaur trackway would look like. And I had dimensions and I had amounts of concrete and budgets and, and it's just so turned out before I submitted it, there was a NSDA conference in Cincinnati. And I went to their session and knew that by the end of it, I had to basically delete everything and not talk about structures, but talk about student impact. So if you're ever gonna write a grant, which I suggest you do, um, how is this gonna help students? How's it gonna move them forward? Um, and then I had, you know, make sure to answer the questions um, and use all your resources. I'm not the greatest writer in the world, uh, but the English teacher down the hall is pretty good. And so allowing them to take a look at it and give me feedback. And we created something that was pretty awesome. And even though it felt like just some kind of Hail Mary, um, it, it, it worked out, right? I'll come back to that in just a second. Um, so I vividly remember, right? Staff PD afternoon, we're half asleep. My email's up and there's a ding. And I look at it and I look at it again. I'm like, And the, one of the people who had worked with me the whole time was sitting right there and was like, and of course he brushed me off like, hey, come on. And I looked again and it was that email that said, yeah. You're approved. You you get the money, and, and I still I get I'm got goosebumps right now. Still thinking about it, even though it was quite a few years ago. Uh, and then there was also a little bit of fear, because what we wrote into it, I had never I just it was here, but actually creating it, I certainly didn't have the skills, and and so there was a little it was it was a scary kind of process. So as I was doing the research, this dinosaur trackway part of it. Uh, was not the full grant amount. So we started creating other possibilities. And some of the things that we came up with, uh, this is a stratigraphy column that we have along our nature trail right now. So as you go around the, the three sides, there are different folds and faults that you might see in rock layers all around Eastern Kentucky. And then on the one side, uh, we're an area where you can find Ordovician fossils, trilobites, brachiopods, uh, other geeky stuff like that. And what we were able to do is to put different uh, populations of fossils on different layers and look at it as, look at uh, reading those layers uh, as if you were reading a book. And what, you know, looking at the populations and as the populations change, what kind of story could we tell? By the way, this is an older Paleozoic Ordovician uh, Earth's history kind of thing. Um, we also created a, uh, <clears throat> a dig site. Uh, it turns out I'm also a, a bad cattle farmer and so I had a few dead cows and we concrete and we pushed in rib bones and femurs and all kind, in all sorts of different ways. We used some money to buy a saber-toothed tiger replica skull and then we cut it in half. And then we had two, what looked like two saber-toothed tigers that we could put in. We grabbed, our, we also bought some replica mastodon teeth that we could put into it. And we had this great scene, right? This death scene that students could excavate and then create a story of what was going on there at the end. And that uh, dinosaur trackway that had been the inspiration of all of this, uh, we actually got it to go and uh, it's there. This is uh, my kids, adults, actually the elementary school that's just uh, 100 yards from us came down and working with them and uh, again working with observation and inference and that kind of work. Uh, so writing grants is great and we've had a little bit of success but another thing that we learned is we have no control. Once I send that off like if I never hear from it again, like did I just send it to the wrong email? Well, I, you know, you, you may never even get a ding letter from it. So what I, I've started to do is leverage industry that's right there in, in the town. We, uh, <clears throat> there's an idea. So instead of baseball cards, we have engineer cards and engineers, not you know people that you would see at our Walmart, for example. 
and we got the basics of them. We put their name and I have them all around our classroom. And just for bonus points, right? If my kids see these people in, in the town, it's their job to go uh, shake their hands and have a conversation and get a selfie and, and then bring it back. And then that's um, the bonus points and how they get it. But it creates that, uh, starts creating that relationship. The engineers feel like stars, right? Uh, and <clears throat> leveraging that, because we do some other things, we do some videos, uh, leveraging that relationship has gotten us some other things. Uh, we've uh, been able to build a bird blind. It is amazing how, you know, a week or two, and you can start to train birds to show up with bird seed uh, at a certain time. And then we can start to uh, uh, run investigations. Does the color of the bird feeder matter? Does the height of the bird feeder matter? My students can actually collect that data and answer that question. Uh, we have a cycles area. So I'm sure all of you have seen the uh, the rock cycle game travel story where you roll dice and you go to certain places within the rock cycle or water cycle or nitrogen cycle or carbon cycle. Well, we can do all of that here and we can set it up. We have signs that, that are those different areas and, and it's just kind of a, a extra little twist to, to that whole work. Uh, about three or four years ago, <clears throat> I, I was asked to become a STEM teacher, uh, even though I have like no background, but I guess I was the one willing to do it. Uh, and so the idea of makerspace, the idea of right, the expert over here, like I want to go to his classroom next. Uh, that's what we've start, That's where the focus has been uh, here the last few years. Uh, this is a uh, a Martian rover challenge. So Lego robots, like like Jim was talking about. Uh, we have an outside area uh, where they can test our robots. Uh, there's actually within the within the whole lesson, they never get to go out there. It's all done based on a picture that somehow there was a ruler on Mars during that, and they have to scale it up and do their programming based on their scaling that they create. So, so pretty awesome. Stuff. And there, there's several other things that we have, but, uh, uh, but that's, that's basically the gist of, of our work, and uh, thank you very much. Within the, within the whole lesson, they never get to go out there. It's all done based on a picture that somehow there was a ruler on Mars during that, and they have to scale it up and do their programming based on their scaling that they created. So, so pretty awesome stuff. And there, there's several other things that we have, but, uh, uh, but that's, that's basically the gist of, of our work, and uh, thank you very much.